some of the ideas you have about leaning into fear and risk, they come from growing up with your dad and your relationship with your dad, especially as he, he got on in years. Can you, yes. can you tell me more about how that started? And Yeah, I'll tell you two things. Uh, so the first one I talk about a lot. The second one I've really not talked about publicly before, but I'm cool doing that. Uh, in the first respect, uh, when you're a child, you tend to re- repel against whatever your parents instill in you, right? Uh, they may tell you, you know, Hey, don't, don't wear, uh, you know, don't wear that, that clothing that exposes uh, you or whatever the case may be. And you're like, I'm going to wear it anyway. Uh, my dad was ultimately just a very fearful person uh, and encouraged uh, myself and my brothers not to take a lot of risk. And by default, I, you know, kind of repelled against that a bit. And uh, I became very much about taking, you know, some risk in my life. Uh I would say that over time, a decade's worth of, you know, military, secret service, central intelligence, SpaceX, all these things. My dad originally was not a proponent of any of those things. He actually encouraged me not to join the military and things like that. Um, he, I, I asked him once in kind of a frustrated way, I said, what would you have me do? Would you have me work in like a library? Is that what you want? Uh, and, but long story short, with time with my dad, he became comfortable in the idea that I, I guess you're, you're, you're figuring it out uh, and stuff like that. Um, and I wouldn't say my dad was a completely fearful character, but he passed away a couple years ago. And uh, I said goodbye to him before he you know, expired. Well, that's probably a more technical term for that. Uh, but I said goodbye to him and... Uh, he had Alzheimer's, so it was like a brutal end for him. It took a tremendous amount of courage to navigate that, so Absolutely. kudos to him. But I remember uh, he was lying in the bed, uh, you know, right there towards the end, a day or so away from passing away, and I came to see him, and uh, I he kind of o- opened his eyes in these things, and uh, he grabbed my hand, and I had tears dripping down my face onto my dad's face, and he just, oh, you know, he grabbed me super tight with his hand. And, uh, you know, I told him that everything was okay. And, you know, I gave him that jolt, like I told you, that I've, for whatever reason in life, have kind of been in a space where, you know, I've been called upon to do that many times. Um, but at the same time that my father passed away, I thought to myself, and this is the part I haven't really shared very much, is I will not live or so much like I will not go out like this. I will not go out like you. I will push myself into fear and risk all the more, do what my heart tells me to do and things like that. And just like, so I can go away, you know, like walk off this earth knowing that I really put it all on the field. And not only are you doing that for yourself, you're doing that for lots of people through North. Yeah. I mean, so just uh, imagine, put yourself in my shoes for a second. If, uh, and, and of course you do uh, positive impact and things like that too. But uh, for me, this is ultra rich, the idea that I could help people lean into fear and risk and get after what they want. Ultra meaningful for me. How, uh, could, it, how could it not be? Yeah, and it's really, uh, as I look back in time, and I didn't really kind of know I was on a path to do what I'm doing, it intuitively makes sense. 